Richard, I remember four years ago we were we first met and we discussed how long it would take until the German market would be big enough for you to open up an office in Germany abroad across the ocean. And so I'm happy it is by now. I'm happy your Hamburg office, your Hamburg office is stronger than more than 30 employees by now, really strong. And that rocket fuel became one of the big players in the data-driven real-time advertising business, even a stock-listed company by now. So let's say it may be not rocket science, but you got rocket fuel. Please welcome on stage Richard Frankel, CEO and president of Rocket Fuel. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending and listening to the talk today. Um, and thank you for the kind introduction. It's been amazing to see how much progress the market has done here. And um, it's been wonderful to see the development of the new technologies in the world of advertising. Um, I'm Richard Frankel. I've been in the internet ad business for about 20 years now. Started with a company called Net Gravity that maybe one person here remembers. And um, those are the early, the dark and early days of ad serving. Our motto at Net Gravity was right ad, right time, right person. We didn't do that. Um, but now we do that. And today we're going to talk about how the state of technology has advanced and marketers have amazing ability to do new things. The subject of the, of the talk today is the age of consumer choice and the effect that has on all of us in the world of digital marketing. So um, consumers have a huge a number of choices in everything they're doing. So I thought I'd start with a relevant example that um, everyone understands really well, which is the world of cars. Um, there are a lot of cars to choose from. Consumers are struggling to understand all the different makes and models. Not everyone as, is as enthusiastic as my 18-year-old son in trying to understand what all the cool cars are that are out in the world. But automakers are continuing to proliferate all of the makes and models and um, give consumers more and more choice. There's a lot of debate in the auto industry about whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. Is is there such a thing as too much choice? Should we have fewer makes or, or, or should we have more? And I just thought I would read this quick quote from um, Dieter Zetsch, who's the, the, the CEO of, of Mercedes. After the introduction of the, uh, the, GLA, the GLE, he was explaining how difficult it is to roll out new products in the market. And, and what he said was something very simple, which is, we have observed there is a strong correlation between increased sales and new models. In other words, new cars and consumers buy more of them. So marketers cannot resist the drive to increase choice and consumers love it as well and they vote with their wallets. Of course, marketers have a very similar problem in the world of autos as in any consumer product. Um, there may be eight or five or 10 or 12 new models from Mercedes this year, but there's, there's guaranteed to be tens of thousands of different websites and apps and other kinds of media that consumers can interact with. And marketers are struggling with the same challenge, the same paradox of choice. When consumers have so many choices, how is a marketer supposed to figure out how to reach his audience? How is a marketer to make sense of all of these sites? How can a marketer figure out which of the 10,000 sites are the ideal sites to reach a particular person on a particular day? to drive a particular marketing goal. And that is some, that's some extremely tricky stuff. And the proliferation of consumer choice and the proliferation of media, websites, apps, tools, all different kinds of interactions means that um, it, the, world, the world of consumer marketing has gotten incredibly complicated. Um, of course, marketers', marketers role is to guide consumers through this maze of interactions with the right messages and the right, uh, the right kinds of interactions to drive their goals. That's what, that's, what, that's what we're doing in the world of marketing. It's our job to figure that out. Um, historically, marketers have relied on a wide variety of tools, services, people, CRM systems, their agency partners, and then just a tremendous amount of people time trying to figure out how to make all of this work. 
This is the world of spreadsheet hell that anyone who's grown up in the world of marketing knows all too well. This is the world of testing and learning. And testing and learning is, of course, how we figure out what works and what doesn't. And, it, and it's, um, it's an essential element of what we do, but it, it operates on people time. And people time is not especially fast. Um, so this, is, uh, this people time is running into the challenge of the explosion of choice, the explosion of all of the options for consumers. It's getting harder and harder for marketers to figure out which channel should they use? What kind of creative, me creative should they use? What kind of, should they do brand messaging or direct response messaging? How should they combine them? How much should you invest in your website versus in external marketing? Versus how, how should you try to use viral marketing? What about traditional media? What about non-traditional media, billboards? Um, painting sidewalks. There's so many options that marketers have. The explosion of choice is, is leading into a world where marketers are overwhelmed. And today we're going to talk a little bit about solutions for the terror of this explosion of options and the explosion of data. Um, it's, it gets even worse though. Um, this is a, a little map that Gartner built. Um, this is a job description for marketing. So if you're a marketer, if you work in the world of advertising, um, this is a way of thinking about all of the things that you have to be good at. Uh, of course, no one person can have all of these skills and do all of these things. In fact, this is really not a job description. It's a description of an entire department of people who have to have a wide variety of expertise. And uh, being good at all of this stuff is unbelievably hard. So you can understand how marketers are getting more and more challenged. Not only do they have the explosion of all of the variations of, of consumer interactions available to them, but there's a, a huge range of expertise that marketers are asked to have these days. And that can be extremely scary. The good news is that you know, in the midst of this complexity, there is, an op there is a tremendous opportunity for those who have the courage to grab it. And that opportunity is built around transformation of marketing. And I think that's what we're gonna talk, that's what we're gonna talk um, ab about more today. Um, the transformation of marketing is really about understanding the complexity of consumers and taking advantage of new technology so that we can turn this challenge into um, opportunity, and we can turn this opportunity into real revenue and, and better return for our companies. And of course, that's what we're here. To, that's what we're here to do. So I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I'm, I'm trying to going to try to use a bunch of examples today to to bring some of these ideas to life, to understand the complexity of consumer choice and the complexity of how we understand consumers. Um, the old world of marketing, it was it was hard to understand consumers when there was. When there was a, a football game on, on, on a TV channel, everyone who watched that all looked the same. So one channel, one show, one experience, and a mass audience. 10 million people watched the, the football game, and they look like 10 million identical people. They're all just the same person. They're all the football watcher. Now, of course, that, you know, that was the experience 20 years ago. Now those 10 million people have a massive array of choices of how they interact with that football game. They can watch it on TV, they can watch it on their iPad, they can watch it on their phone, they can store it and watch it later, they can take a clip of it and email it to their friend, they can tweet, they can take a picture of themselves at the game and put it on their Facebook. They can take a picture of themselves sitting in their living room and then Photoshop it into a picture of the game and post that. Their friends can vote on it. They can, all, they can talk about it in a wide variety of forums. They can, they can uh, express their opinions about the incompetence of the coach on Reddit the next day. There's a huge range of interactions that consumers can have around that one experience. So instead of 10 million identical football watchers, now we have a ton, a huge variation of experiences and a huge range of modes of interacting with consumers. And that's a good thing for marketers. And that is a, a little bit of a, uh, 
of a confusing statement, but what happens is that all of those different interactions, all of those different ways of engaging with that media experience, whether you're just going to watch the game or whether you're going to spend you know, the two hours while the game is on tweeting um, or whatever it is that you're going to do, all of those different paths of engagement create the opportunity for marketers to understand the difference between those consumers. It allows us to understand the complexity and richness of the individuals and get a much better ability to understand how they're going to interact with that experience and they're going to interact with our brand. If someone takes a picture of themselves um, next to their car in the parking lot at the game, that's a different experience and, that, and that's starting to be a brand experience too. Or maybe they're going to take a picture with uh, drinking a beer or some other, some other experience or they're going to tweet about what they cooked to serve their friends um, during that game. So all of these different experiences are things that marketers can, can use to better understand the consumer. And that is, um, that is, that is really powerful. So the paradox here is that the explosion of media choices for consumers and the dramatic increase of different modes of interacting with media and brands for consumers should not scare marketers. In fact, the explosion of opportunity and choice has led to the exact opposite experience for marketers. It's not worse, it's better. The amazing array of different ways that consumers interact with brands and with media has generated vast amounts of data that allows marketers to actually tell the difference between each consumer. The promise of one-to-one -one marketing could never play out in the world of mass media because we saw everyone as the same. There's just part of the mass, faceless members of the mass. Now, when we have so many different ways of understanding each individual person, we can actually do real one-to-one -one and understand the unique difference between each individual person, and that's generated by the mass of variety of experiences in the world of media today. So I would argue that the explosion of media choice and the explosion of choices for consumers is a gift to marketers. It is going to make us super powered. But of course, the challenge is how do you do it? And of course, that's what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the rest of today. The solution to the explosion, I'm supposed to do this, there we go. The, the uh, solution to the explosion of all of these choices and the vast amounts of data that all of these choices generate is, of course, technology. Um, technology can be scary, but I, I, I want to say, put aside your fear. The uh, technology is just a tool. It's easy to understand a hammer, and I'm going to try to make it easy to understand some of the tools that are available to the toolbox of marketers today, many of which are just starting to roll out um, around the world. Um, the story of technology is one in, um, in which it, it gets easier and easier for marketers to focus on their jobs and their goals and what they're trying to achieve with their brands and spend less and less time worrying about technology. We don't want to turn all marketers into technologists. We want to turn all marketers into great marketers taking advantage of all the, all the technology that is available. And then we can turn what used to be the simplest things, which actually had hidden complexity into powerful tools for marketers. And I'll, I'll give you another example. The easiest way of targeting, in the, you know, one of the very easy ways of targeting that seems easy to understand in the old world of marketing is time. So when does my campaign work well? Well, it works well on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. So in the old world of marketing, what, what you do is you would say, okay, let's just run it on Tuesday and Wednesday. Or maybe we'd heavy up on Tuesday and Wednesday. But, but of course, that's actually the wrong thing to do because it turns out that there's definitely a good consumer ready to engage with your brand on Saturday morning or Thursday night or Sunday. Now, that's not the time when the most people are interested. Tuesday and Wednesday are still pretty good. But the way of understanding time is not that there's one time which is the perfect time for everybody. Instead, there's one time which is the perfect time for each individual person. So even something as simple as time of day, day part, 
targeting is actually a gross approximation. The way of understanding something as simple as time is there's a right time for every unique person, and we want to make sure that we reach the person at the right time. And that means all of a sudden, this, this challenge of what the right time is has become super complicated. And that's just one bit of easy to understand data. And everything else that we know about consumers and everything else they do um, just gets more and more complicated. Um, the solution that, um, that is just coming, becoming in, um, available in market these days is called a data management platform. And I'm not going to get into too big of a geek out over what uh, data management platforms do at all, uh, in gory detail. I'm not going to show you any demos or anything like that. Um, but the essence of this new kind of platform is that it's, it's a tool that's built for marketers to understand their consumers and use that data. It's a place where you can put all of the data that you know about every interaction that you have with the consumer, that every interaction the consumer has with your brand, whether they're paid or owned or earned, whether they're online or offline. And this is a, a really dramatic change. So instead of siloed data warehouses that are not built for what marketers need to get done. Instead, this is specifically built for, um, for, for this new world. And it's all about putting all the data in one place so you can have one holistic view of the consumer and you can have one holistic control over all of your interactions. And that's, very, that's a very powerful idea. Um, if, you, if we get this right, then the tool can be used easily, quickly, and efficiently, and you can have um, quick new understanding of how you can interact with consumers and make your marketing more successful. Um, there's a, uh, another element to the, to, the, to the data management platform, though, which is really important and is uh, uh, another transformative element in the technology world of marketing uh, in 2015. And that is the interconnection of the data to action. So all of the data in the world that feeds into analytic systems that people can study is awesome. It's fascinating. It's interesting. But if human beings have to study this stuff and then wait till next month or next quarter or next year to use it, then that is, uh, that's problematic. That means that um, humans are going to get in the way of fast action. And so the, um, the newest, most sophisticated platforms are, are integrating these data management tools with action-taking platforms so that you can actually um, have data flowing into your platform in real time and, the, and your tools by themselves through a demand-side platform or an, ad, or an ad stack can automatically, quickly, and efficiently take advantage of that data in real time. So that means that your marketing tools are learning on your behalf and getting smarter all the time. And taking advantage of that learning and getting smarter all the time to take action immediately and have impact immediately on, on consumers everywhere that we can interact with them. And this is possible not just in the world of, of digital media. We have customers using these kinds of tools now to interact with consumers uh, in, in display, in mobile, in social contexts, with video contexts, with email, with CRM systems, with call centers. We have customers who are able to see that a consumer has interacted with a particular media unit on a website and then come to their website and um, put items in the shopping cart and then not buy it. And that can kick out a message to a call center um, so that if the consumer calls with a question, the call center knows that they had that interaction and knows what products they're interested in. And then based on what happens in the call center, we can change what ads we show them when we see them next checking the sports score. So those kinds of tied together systems, developing automated interactions with consumers and taking advantage of all of your touch points, that's not science fiction. That's what's happening today in the real world. That's how, we're, uh, that's how we're working with clients right now. And um, you know, as marketers, uh, this sounds amazing. And the way to get there is one step at a time to build up new capabilities and reach out uh, to tie in all this data together. And that's, that's what we're working on. So I thought I would, um, just to help um, get people a little more comfortable with the scariness of this new technology, 
I wanted to just talk for a second about um, one of, an example of this kind of tool, a tool in which you have um, automated data gathering, automated decision making based on um, machine learning, where you have multiple disparate data gathering systems integrated so that the end user can apply the learnings of all these tools seamlessly and invisibly and enjoy the experience of doing that without being a technology expert. Um, so here's the, new, here's the data gathering um, and automated decision making platform I was talking about. It's a Porsche. Um, so I put this up here as an example because I wanted to show how we cannot be so scared of technology. So what I just described is real. Modern automobiles have lots of computers in them. Those computers are gathering data in real time about what's going on with the brakes, what's going on with the steering, what's going on in the engine with the uh, interaction of the, of the uh, driver's foot with the accelerator pedal. All of those actions are generating data. And the car has all these little computers built in that's storing all that and recording it and learning how what, what, um, the driver interacts with the vehicle and with the road. And the end user experience is not that they don't do anything, you know, they're still driving the car. And it's still fun. <laughs> it's still fun to drive the car. But you don't have to be an expert in all of the interactions of the computers and what's happening in the anti-lock brake system in the brakes in order to understand that the car is fun to drive and you can corner more quickly and you can drive more safely. And these are exactly the kinds of interactions that I hope that marketers are going to start having. These are exactly the kind of experiences that, I, that, that I, marketers are going to start having as they, as they roll out these new tech stacks. And they're not going to have to be experts in how the tech works. Instead, they're going to be experts in understanding their consumers and how to best engage with them and, and, and what impact that has on the company. And um, this should be a transformative experience for marketers. So this is a very simple representation, guess, learn, and test, of how marketing works. Um, so the guess part is, uh, maybe a nicer way of saying it is hypothesis creation. So guess, I'm going to guess that we can reach consumers on Tuesdays and they'll be interested in my shoe product. And then we, run a, we, have, we uh, set up some way of learning about that. We set up some kind of uh, a test media campaign. And then we'd start testing, and we watch what happens, and we learn. So this is human-powered. This is how the human-powered world of marketing works, with guess, learn, test, learn, rinse, repeat on hum at human speed. You can run a few tests a month, maybe a few a quarter, and then you see what happened, and then you try to remember and use it for next quarter. And then uh, you, know, you go on to a new company, and all of that learning that was in your head is gone. And the next person has to start the testing cycle all over again. So this has changed. This is the new world with the new technology. So in the new world of new technology, there's no guessing. Notice that the guess is gone. And the reason that the guessing is gone is because people don't have to guess anymore about what's going to work and what's not going to work in this new world of technology. In the new world of technology, we're just going to take our ideas and we're going to throw them into the wild. We're going to take our creative concepts, as many as we can come up with, and run them on our websites, in our apps, and out in, out in the world of digital. We're just going to put our marketing dollars to work. And the technology is going to learn for us. It's going to gather all the data of all the interactions of all the consumers with whatever we're testing, and it's going to learn. And because we're talking about learning on computer speed, the learning is going to happen really quickly. And our technology will act on our behalves really quickly. Instead of learning on months or quarters, we're talking about learning in, in minutes or hours. And as marketers, we're just going to sit back and lean back in our chairs and watch it happen. And what we're going to see is that the technology is going to get, is going to learn in hours or days what it used to take us years with vastly more amounts of data. And we're going to see why it's working, what's happening, what are the technology tools that we're using learning. And then we're going to adapt what we do based on what we see the technology platforms learning for us. This is a very different world. This is a world about using all the data. This is about taking advantage 
of all of the choices that consumers have in the world of media and using all of the data that they generate from every single moment that they touch your brand and your, and your media and your website. And instead of wondering if it's working, we're going to know what's working and learn and act and adapt. And so this is a world of um, high speed, learning quickly, getting much better results much more quickly. This is, this is not the future of marketing. This is marketing right now with the latest tools that are just coming out. And that's very different from this world of, oops, guess, test, and learn. We're not guessing anymore. We don't need, human beings don't need to guess. And when we do that, um, the, right, the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain work together. All of the um, creativity that can be unlocked by learning rapidly can be used to make the next campaign work better, but it also should free us from the tyranny of testing so that we can be more creative, think of more rich strategies, try more things more quickly. If you can test one concept a quarter, you've got to be very careful about what you test. If you can test a thousand concepts a day, you can just try stuff. And that is much, much more powerful. And that's the world that, that, that you want to get to. Um, that's what an integrated data management and um, demand side platform can do for you and can unlock the power of your creativity, give you a single view of the customer, help you learn faster about what's happening in the marketplace, and have it take action on your behalf so that while you're sitting here listening to me, while you're sleeping, while you're eating lunch, while you're watching a football game, your marketing is getting more powerful, more effective, and working for you. And that's the world that we're trying to build towards um, at, at Rocket Fuel. A real quick example of this, I'm supposed to give a concrete example of how this really works. Uh, we've got a client in the US, they, um, they run a very, very large insurance company, one of the biggest ones in North America. And um, they put together a platform like this and they had a challenge, which is they wanted to reach people who weren't customers anymore. They wanted to reach what they call lapsed customers. Not only did they want to reach the lapsed customers, but they wanted to reach the lapsed cu customers who had never been on their website. How do you do that in the world of digital? How do you reach people who you don't have any contact with? So we integrated their offline CRM data into the online digital data management platform. And then using that, we were able to find millions of their lapsed customers from the last five years everywhere in, in digital and show them specific highly tailored marketing programs to bring them back as customers. So within two quarters, we brought back 4,500 customers who had lapsed and we went and found them and got them to come back and re-sign up for, for, for programs, for insurance programs. These were people that the marketer could not find anymore any other way. So we turned digital into a medium for finding customers that they lost who they only knew offline. And we could do that by combining the power of online offline data and an integrated ad platform to reach folks anywhere in the wild. And that's just one small example of the kinds of things that you can do when you put all the data together to, to drive marketing goals. And the client didn't have to worry about all the bits and bytes of how everything was tied together. They just said, how do I reach my lapsed customers who, who have never visited my website? And we could do it for them. So if you can embrace this kind of change, if you can do it without fear, then you can take advantage of all these new platforms. And fundamentally, what these systems are about is it's about not being a victim of the transformation of consumer attention, not being a victim of the crazy, insane uh, distribution of media, thousands of websites that consumers interact with, millions of different kinds of bits of data that you might have available to you. Don't be scared of that. Put in place the right technology. Let it do the hard work for you. Let computers do the heavy lifting of all the bits and bytes and unlock the value for marketers of all of this data. And that's what the world of digital is really becoming. And that's what we're hoping that we can help our customers do at Rocket Fuel. So that's my talk for today. Embrace the change and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard. Are there questions from the audience? Fragen aus dem Publikum? 
Ich übersetze auch gerne, heben Sie einfach die Hand und ein Mikrofon ist auf dem Weg zu Ihnen. Ich sehe da hinten, ist das eine erhobene Hand oder lehnt sich da nur jemand an? Es ist etwas schwer hier gegen das Licht. No questions yet from the audience. Überlegen, denken Sie gerne noch mal einen Moment nach, because I've got a question, Richard, because we were talking so much about data, about all the different sources of data. Can you give us some secret about which is the most underestimated data that sure. is? So, um, customers ask me this all the time, what is the one most bit of super powerful data, the one thing that I need? What's the one data point that works the best for my campaign? And I'm going to tell you what it is. It doesn't exist. Um, there is no one bit of data. The secret of data is that um, the reality is that there is no one magic silver bullet bit of data that tells you how to reach a consumer to drive a particular marketing goal. Instead, the secret is that what you want to do is stack up lots of little bits of data. It's all about take, figuring out how to, how to assess in the mass. If you've got 50 million choices of things you could know, what are the top 10 or 20,000? And if you take those top, top 10,000 or 50,000 attributes that have some signal in them to tell you what consumers are interested in or how they might respond, and you can stack all of those up, then you can get amazing results. And it's all about the additive power of lots of little bits of the right data. It's not about one bit of data, but it's, uh, it's a hard thing to do and it requires the new technology. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Any more questions from the audience? I'll take a look. Please, einfach Hand heben auf Deutsch, gerne fragen. Keine weiteren Fragen. Nur ein Kratzen am Kopf. Good. So, thank you very much, Richard, mm -hmm. for being here. Thank being you with for us. having me. Mm -hmm.